Yo, it's Jason. I'm back with another video and I'm continuing my um, top 10 per year series. I'm still doing 70s. I've still got more 70s to do. But while I'm doing the 70s, I'm also doing the 2010s just to be kind of weird and balanced, I guess, to give a modern take on the top 10s. You also get to see sort of what genres are really popular in different decades and different years. But uh, the 70s has been a lot of soul, jazz, funk, fusion stuff, obviously. And then a little touches of uh, punk and metal and hard rock along the way. 2010s, only done one so far, uh, but it's been mostly uh, electronic. A lot of electronic releases in the 2010s that I picked up, obviously. Um, a lot of singles too, actually, because that genre, uh, house, techno, etc., they tend to be more in the single or EP kind of area. But uh, this is going to be a mix. We've got some punk, we got metal, we've got electronic, some uh, the best choices of the underground, let's just say. I was actually looking online to see what, what was popular in 2010. It was, you know, Drake, Taylor Swift, Kanye West. This is the Rolling Stones picks of 2010. Vampire Weekend, which I think I actually have a copy of Vampire Weekend somewhere. Uh, but I don't ever listen to it much, and I only like a couple songs. So, this, originally I was going to do top 10, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expand it to top 12. Uh, because I've located a couple more things uh, that need mentioning. Um, and yeah, we'll get into it. Basically, there, there's, I'm going to say maybe... I gotta say maybe 50% of these records I bought in 2010 or very close to 2010 and then the other 50% uh, were much more recent pickups um, so it's a little bit of a strange year I don't, I'm not gonna say this is the best year of music by any means based on this list but that being said there's a couple of really good quality electronic releases in this year that are must uh, buys and there are a couple of um, couple of like two three really big songs that I still play in a lot of DJ sets so there it is 2010 number 12 coming in at the bottom of the list is a French hardcore band I've showed this one before called State Poison uh, what a cover to great drawing uh, on the cover kind of their only album they have an EP or a seven inch I think later on called Fac Oof and uh, which was in 2013 but this is their debut in 2010 I think they kind of split a little bit after that all the songs as indicated by the titles are in French but when you listen to it you're maybe not gonna know if it's in French or English because uh, the vocals are just like that this is what the inner stickers look like this album's really good in fact it's so good I actually bought it twice so there, there you go. Hey, speaking of lyrics, do we get some lyric sheets in here? Yep, looks like we get some lyric sheet in here for those who can read French. And just good stuff, straight in your face, political, hardcore punk. Uh, love the vocal style. It's really kind of all over the place, messy style of, of uh, punk vocals. And um, maybe a little crusty, I don't know, but more hardcore, I guess. Stay Poison, that's my number 12. Number 11, we're going to keep it on that punk theme. This is very crusty, in fact. Um, I think these guys are from San Fran, from the prank label. This is uh, Desolation. Desolation, Rest in Panic. Three-track EP. Um, from San Fran, I got my notes on the back. 2010 on prank. So there you go. Let's see if we got a little inner, inner sleeve lyrics. And photos yeah this one is crusty but really heavy uh, vocals are almost like uh, death metal or heavy metal uh, anyway um, two tracks one side one on the other I kind of prefer the two track side it's definitely in your face uh, no nonsense going full throttle like I said pretty heavy crust punk uh, desolation rest in panic that's my number 11 just missing the top 10. Now for top 10, for number 10, another extreme underground release um, that is just killer, killer band in your face. Uh, this is Suffering Mind. This is some gore grind. Uh, well, grind core. I don't, I don't think it's very gory. They're more on the sort of blasphemy, anti-religion tip on this album anyway. Um, Authority, religion, the vile bastards of the eternal weakness of mankind. 
Um, yeah, these guys have been around for a while. They're from Poland. This is some Poland, a uh, Polish uh, grindcore. Uh, I'll just see my notes here. Um, yeah, from Lublin, Poland. Don't know where that town is. These guys are OGs since 2009, cranking out release after release, including a one-inch record. Haven't seen that before. A lot of splits, as you would expect with grindcore, including an anti-racism grind split with PLF. Gotta pick that up. And yeah, just a whole lot of fun, this kind of genre. It's it, totally insane, totally over the top. And they're kind of in on that joke, I think, from the get-go. And the songs are extremely short. Uh, the shortest one on this is 24 seconds long. Um, so it's it's a quick ripper and uh, pretty indecipherable vocals, as you expect. Kind of like Death Metal, Cookie Monster, but on crack. So that's my number 10, Suffering Mind. Uh, it's a blast. Definitely an interesting genre to collect. Uh, grind core and it's on the thrash core label out of the u.s now my number nine we're going to get into some electronic territory and techno in particular uh this is a finnish artist we're going to go with on moat evolver the label samuli kempi samuli kempi is the name of the artist i've actually I almost had him in another 2010s chart i guess my 2013 best of but i couldn't find the record so i found this one it's Dark Matter and Wormhole are the two tracks, one on each side. Uh, pretty solid stuff. It's not, it doesn't grab you right off the bat. I would say it kind of grows on you as the track goes, uh, progresses. So, um, you know, give it a minute or so. Uh, that being said, I'd say Wormhole is probably the better of the two, um, more compelling. Um, yeah, it's a sleeper gem on this 12 inch, uh, lots of dub and sort of strange sounds along the way. So yeah, this guy's from Helsinki. He's produced a lot. Mode Evolver is an excellent label as well for techno. This is number 15 on the label. Samuli Kempi is my number nine pick for 2010. Number eight is a single that I've had for quite a while. I think I got a couple years after 2010. Uh, and a label that is pretty well revered uh, especially for industrial techno they really champion that a lot and that's the perk tracks label which is perks label uh, out of the uk uh perk aka ali wells uh is not on this ep this is by go hiyama from japan so this is the go hiyama postmodern ep on perk tracks i think this is a really pivotal single because perk tracks has been around for a little while this is number 40 they're probably well over 100, 140 by now. But it's, like I said, it's really well known for more of an industrial, hard, harsh sound of techno these days, including Perk. But I'd say in the early days, there were still kind of elements of minimal, even like Tech House at times. And this EP kind of crosses the Rubicon between that and the industrial sound, both for this label and for this artist, I think, too, Go, uh, Go Hiyama, who's been around for a while. Um... Yeah, so you start to hear, you still hear some cleanness in the production, some minimalism, uh, but you also hear some industrial sounds being brought in, uh, especially on the killer remix by Lucy. Uh, this EP is actually all about the remix, really. Uh, Postmodern, the Lucy remix, I have a digital file as well for that, and that is that is a killer track that continues to give lots of techno goodness to the world. Uh, Lucy's from Italy, I believe. And yeah, just an amazing remix. The title track, the original mix of Postmodern, it's kind of, it's okay. It kind of misses the mark. I think it tries to do something, but I don't think it quite accomplishes it. It's got a really cool sort of techno rhythm groove going on, and then it just sort of introduces a kind of an irritating sound or noise which I guess qualifies as the industrial kind of influence, but it doesn't seem to quite fit in the track, and it sounds like it's just something in the room or in the environment or something. I mean, it's kind of like you look around to see if something else just came on, like a radio or something. So, not a huge fan of the original. I don't think it quite hit the mark. There's another track on here, too, called Concrete Advance. Can't say 
anything about that at this point. It's all really about B1, which is postmodern, the Lucy remix from Gohiyama. So that's my number eight. Number seven is, I want to say a stone cold classic of the year, uh, maybe of the decade for the 2010s. Why am I saying that? Because it's a track that I still play, that a lot of people still play. And it's really the remix again. So this is a running theme here for uh, some of the house and techno of, of this decade. But yeah, um, what else can I say? I've had the single for a while. I probably had it when it first came out. I'm trying to think actually if I had the digital file before the vinyl or maybe right around the same time. The artist, it's a duo. They're called Session Victim and it's on the Delusions of Grandeur EP. This is number 12 on Delusions of Grandeur, which I think is either UK or Europe label. Um, really great deep house, very loungy. It's called Million Dollar Feeling. Um, the original version is okay, not bad, but again, it's all about the remix. The remix is by Gerd, G-E-R-D, from the Netherlands. Um, he's on Clone and a lot of those labels. Great producer, um, great record, great song. Um, yeah, I still play it to this day. It definitely works really well in kind of a loungy bar scenarios. It's got a groove, it's got a rhythm, but it's understated and uh, deep house vibe as well. So that is going to be my number seven. Uh, if for anything, it's just because it's been played a hell of a lot. Um, I got to follow it up with another one. I'm kind of changing my ranking here a little bit. I had this a little higher, but we'll go with it at number six. Yeah, I'm going to go with that at number six. This is another one that's because uh, the track itself is just huge and I play it a lot. Um, and it is very good quality too. Uh, it's something I have on digital as well as vinyl. And this is Lee Foss and You Got Me EP on Hot Creations. This is an early Hot Creations release, I think number three, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, three. And it's kind of the first EP by this producer, Lee Foss, who might be the owner, co-owner of Hot Creations, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Hot Creations is very hot these days. Um, it's a lot, I would say a lot more commercial or accessible sounding nowadays. It's more um, really, really riding the, the tech house wave. And this is kind of a tech house track, but it's a deep tech house track. It's uh, kind of progressive in a way. It's just got a really great, uh, bass line and meandering synth line um, and then a female vocal over top I just a really great uh, sound of summer kind of track as well and one that I still play to this day all the time so I'm kind of actually surprised this from 2010 I didn't get it in 2010 I got it maybe in the last few years on digital and then I tracked down the record so that is the, the song I'm talking about is the title track you got me it's an amazing track best song maybe of the year but that being said I'm gonna rank the the 12 inch a little lower because there's not much else going on here uh, to report there's four tracks in total two of them are kind of like okay I'd say the second best one is the b-side number two which is called chic 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 that one is okay um, it's pretty good actually it's got a female a vocal sample as well uh, but the big one is You Got Me, which is the name of the EP on Hot Creations. So that's my number six we're at then. Let's see, this is the danger of me changing the order of my list. So that means I'm going to bring in at number five, I'm going to bring in one more techno one, and then we're going to get in some metal again. But this is a techno LP. Um, this is a really good quality release. Uh, probably would rank higher if I played it more often. I don't play it that often just because it's kind of a kind of an IDM mellow listen. Uh, but I've had it for a long time. I got it probably in 2010. Bought it at Rough Trade, in fact, in London for 12.99 pounds. That'd be like 30 bucks Canadian. Uh, it's called Machine Conspiracy by Confor Conforce. This is the back. <clears throat> it's on a double record. And uh, it's kind of rare. You don't often see techno LPs. Techno tends to be more of a 12-inch or an EP genre, but once in a while you get a full length. And this one covers tons of ground. It's very, I mean, it's got minimal, it's got dub, 
It's got some electro. It's very Detroit sounding. Um, I don't think the artist is not from Detroit. I think he's Dutch, maybe. Um, Confors. Cool cover too. Um, could be a jazz record or something from that album cover. Uh, and some people have described techno as the new jazz. So there you go. Especially Detroit stuff like Carl Craig. Kenny Larkin. If you're into Carl Craig or Kenny Larkin, you would love this album. Uh, if you're into IDM and ambient stuff, you would love this album. Uh, just a great listen album um, for chill afternoon. Uh, but interesting stuff too. Spacey as well. Uh, nothing abrasive. Very well produced. Conforce. It's going to be my number five in the top five. So that means I'm going to put it number four. A metal release. A killer metal release. That's actually just a seven inch thrash metal release it's a split two bands you got Hirax and Violator on this one so Hirax are from the states I think they're from LA they're actually from the 80s they were on Metal Blade at one point even uh, really great thrash got to give them a shout out for their opening sample of the Patton movie which is pretty funny uh, it's called Baptized by Fire is the name of the song um, Herax, that's on the raging side. Uh, it's thrash metal all the way. And Violator on the thrash side with Future Phobia. Uh, Violator are from Brazil. Brasilia, I think is the name of the, of the city. And uh, really great. Killer riffs. Palm muted riffs. The whole, the whole nine. Um, vocals are great too. The vocals kind of sound like a higher, slightly higher pitch Tom Araya, I think, a little bit. And uh, yeah, Violator and Herax killer split called Raging Thrash. Really glad I got this. Recently, I don't even know if it, I think it was a blind buy or something. Good price. If you see that split, that's definitely worth picking up. And here's here's another kind of anomaly. Like the uh, metal genre is not uh, that frequent that you get 7 inches in metal. Usually you get more punk. You get a lot of punk in 7 inch format but not so much in metal. So that's my number 4. Number 3 got three left. Number three is very good quality house music, uh, deep house release uh, by the artist Reggie Dokes uh, Until Tomorrow. This is on the Royal Oak label, which is a Dutch label. It's part of the Clone family, this logo here. This logo, that logo. So Clone Records is actually a shop as well in Rotterdam. I've been there. It's amazing. Um, their labels, their family of labels alone can fill up over half the shop is just their own labels. So Clone Records has been around for a while and they have, they tend to have these sort of sub labels kind of by sub genres. So Royal Oak is more like Deep House stuff and they have the Clone Basement series, which is like harder techno and then they have like an electro spinoff, etc. But, uh, that's all about Clone. What about Reggie? Reggie Dokes is from Detroit. And uh, according to my notes, he has his own label too. He's got a label called Psychostasia, which I've never seen. Uh, but yeah, this is like a smooth, jazzy masterpiece. I would say this is kind of like if Herbie Hancock was making Deep House, this is probably what he would make. Uh, it's very jazzy. The piano is extremely clean in here. There's clean piano. Um, just great rhythms, polyrhythmic. Uh, at times, uh, electronic beats though, clean production, some string but very subtle in the background, uh, just really cool EP. Three tracks in total, all three are good. All three are solid. So I probably don't play this enough. This is only number two on Royal Oak. The label's been going for a while, it's still going. And I don't have any other Reggie Dokes. I need to investigate more, I think, by him, just based on that EP alone. So that's my number three for 2010. Number two, um, number one and number two, very classic, um, well-played, played often tracks. But number two is one of the most played tracks in my DJ sets still to this day. Probably can't play it. I can't play it that much anymore because I've, I've played it so much, <laughs> but it really just fits in so well in lounge sets and deep house sets. And I'm talking, it's on Crosstown Rebels, I'm talking about Goody and Dub Shape are the artists, you can see that. And the single is called Every, Every Cow Has a Bird, 
and bueno on the other side. Every cow that has a bird is slightly better than the bueno. They're both killer tracks. Deep house, smooth grooves. Again with a piano too that just kind of randomly meanders in and out. A little bit abstract that way. Um, there's kind of a fallout breakdown kind of section in the song. Uh, but nothing like cheesy or EDM or anything. This is this is some smooth deep house done very well. Uh, like I said, fits perfectly in a loungy set. It's very listenable. Uh, the track takes you in some places and uh, a little bit abstract that way, but very solid groove. Bueno is really cool too. It just kind of has a, a rolling kind of shuffle deep house groove as well, but with a random little vocal snippet once in a while. Some guy saying well or something. So yeah, Crosstown Rebels, like the hot creations I showed earlier, big label nowadays. It was kind of getting big at this point too. Uh, really big on the deep house and progressive house sound, uh, more accessible than ever, maybe a little bit more commercial nowadays. <clears throat> then this is more of an underground or at least very understated release as well, deep house wise. Uh, Goody, G-U-T-I and Dub Shape. Look them up. <clears throat> this is uh, a must-have if you're in your house, in deep house especially. Now, last but not least, I got to go with a huge producer in Germany uh, for underground stuff. This is Roman Flugel. This guy has been around for a while, and he's done a lot of different productions under this name and under other pseudonyms. He's also, like, when I was looking him up, he's also a key player in a bunch of... Um, really important minimal uh, IDM labels. Playhouse uh, on Gaku Music and Clang with a K, Clang Electronique are just solid 2000s era minimal deep house and minimal techno labels he is a founder of. Roman Flugel, this is an EP he put out on Dial Records. This is Dial 54 and it's called How to Spread Lies. <laughs> this is an awesome EP. Um, I got to pick this up too at Hard Wax, it looks like, in Berlin, of all places. Um, I see that Hard Wax is very well known for techno, but usually a little harder driving techno than this one. is kind of a bit more loungy, IDM listening material. Uh, you wouldn't be rocking a dance floor with this by any means. But you might play it in like an abstract set or a loungy set again too. It's got some piano again, it's got a haunting piano refrain, minimal beats. Um, great abstract cover. Not sure who did the cover art on this thing. Graphics, it says by cover image Josephine Pride. Graphics by ITF Graphic Design. And um, yeah, distributed through Compact out of Germany, the dial label. Um, yeah, what else can you say? Pattern 16 on here. There's Sunny Side Up, which is very well-known play that one a lot pattern 16 is on side b uh, fun glitch bleep techno track with bouncy synth sounds in abundance uh, sunny side perfect techno idm again great atmospherics killer plucked electronic bass line that is pure groove rome flugels from frankfurt germany um and yeah he's got tons of eps but this is probably one of his best ones that i've i've got in my collection that i've heard by him how to Spread Lies. I'll try to do maybe some needle drops here on this thing as we go out. So that is my top 12 for 2010. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, trip through some underground releases and some big songs that I still play in DJ sets now and some killer metal and punk as well. So I'll see you guys in the next one.